Lawmakers in Kaduna State have approved surgical castration as punishment for those convicted of raping children under the age of 14. State Governor Nasir Ahmed El Rufai all, however, need to sign the bill for it to become law. He has previously supported castration to prevent rapists from reoffending. The move follows public outrage over a wave of rapes which prompted the nation's state governors to declare a state of emergency. The state penal law provides for 21 years imprisonment for rape and life imprisonment in the case of a child. And joining us live to discuss this is Dorothy Njemunze, a gender rights activist. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me on. Now, total castration for convicted rapists in Kaduna versus life imprisonment or both. Could you please tell us the consensus among rights activists on this? I don't know that there's a consensus amongst rights activists because people are torn, you know, um, for different reasons. And it's expected that people will be torn for different reasons. We all have different realities. Nonetheless, um, a lot of people agree that, you know, it should be treated very severely, as severely as the, as the, as the crime is, right? My position on this is that it's a very welcome development. Um, had the people who raped me the first time I was a child being castrated, you know, they would not have had the opportunity to do so to other people. And so, yes, it's not only the first time I was raped, I'm, I'm speaking from experience, it's not only the first time I was raped, had all the people who ever raped me been, you know, castrated. The cases, the repeat cases I'm aware of would not have happened. And so this is a welcome development. This is, um, yes, a practical development. And in addition to castrating them, they should serve their sentences. Mm -hmm. They should, because they are threats to inmates while they are, in, in, while they are incarcerated. Yes, so they should be castrated, yes, and they should serve their sentences full-time, life imprisonment, nothing short. Mm. So this surgical castration being proposed by lawmakers in Kaduna State, will it be enough deterrent considering the low rate of conviction in Nigeria? Um, it's, it's already happening in different parts of the UK and all of that. So it's not a new thing. Um, it's just an additional measure to safeguard other human beings kept around these people because they have proven that it's, they're not to be trusted, you know, with their physical anatomies, you know, fully functioning, you know. And so, yeah, that's, it. there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Mm. Is it enough deterrence? I would not say, I, like I insist, castration in, alone is not enough deterrent. It is an additional deterrent, you know. Um, it, it is what some garnishing for us on, on whatever punishments comes to them. Because we have situations in Nigeria where the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, the Child's Rights Act, are not justiciable. And so if we have this in more places, whatever the law you use, Chances are that even if the person serves a term, the person is not going to be able to go and harm other people. Yeah, so it's, it's a welcome development. Mm. And uh, Governor Elrufai did request for the state to expunge the provision for bail conditions for rape convicts. And it's unclear if that uh, has been approved in the new law. But what's your thoughts on that, that they can't actually uh, be released on bail? It's, a, it's still a very big problem for us right now because um, it's a big problem for us that um, suspects for um, rape, for instance, keep getting released on bill. And what is currently in practice is that when the law enforcement, police and other law enforcement offices are releasing these people, they don't notify the families of the victims. And so we've had so many situations where there have been clashes outside and then the cases of rape that were uh, previously in investigation get dropped and once people start processing their cases of assault by families of the, um, uh, the victim or the victim herself or himself. So it's important to continue keeping these people in. Yes, I agree. I mean, I'm all for every human rights, um, everything to protect human rights of everybody. I'm aware that anybody can allege anything. 
and I believe very strongly in building strong institutions, but there are so many cases we have where these things are very glaring. Let's just follow it all through to the end and, you know, uh, give some... The, we've treated prosecution and investigation of these cases with a lot of levity, and that has encouraged the corruption within the law enforcement to aid and abet uh, sexual predators. Now, if we can give some degree of um, severity to the way we treat, and some, let's be a little more thorough about the way we treat um, uh, sexual violations, then, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot will be happening right. This time, I'm on the part of the Kaduna State Government. This time, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, also wading into this is the Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Tallinn. She recently advocated the death penalty for rape and related offences. Now, is that something you would support as an activist? It's a capital offence. I'm aware of the different, um, the different thoughts around the death penalty. I, 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 I appreciate the sentiments that call for the death penalty because it's, I mean, it's as good as taking the life away. Um, I, I do appreciate those things and also appreciate the, con you know, the concerns of organizations like the Amnesty International. Um, but it's a capital offense and for what it's worth, everything that is accorded to capital offense it should be accorded to rape. Mm. Yeah. Now, beyond legislation that is stiff... People the severity in Nigeria, because it keeps getting trivialized. That's the only way people can appreciate the severity. People keep saying, oh, at least um, you're, not, you're not a virgin, so you just think about it to be sex that you didn't want the way you want it. The severity is trivialized so much, and maybe looking at it from that perspective is what is going to help more and more people, especially our traditional leaders, and our religious leaders that keep trying to blackmail victims into silence after these things have happened, that's the only way they can appreciate the severity or the gravity of such a, a crime called rape. Yes. Mm. So, yes, I, I was going to ask finally, beyond legislation, especially stiff legislations, you know, like uh, maybe death penalty and the rest, what other measures must be taken by governments to stem the seeming daily cases of rape, uh, particularly of minors? The, no, so there's a lot of focus on perpetrators. There's a lot of focus on perpetrators. How at least some focus on victims or survivors. When people survive um, rape, when people survive sexual violence, what does the government have in place for them? In so many cases, the families of the minors or the families of the victims need to be uh, moved for safety. Does the government have any provisions to support such people to achieve such things? In most cases, the answer is no. A lot of focus is made on the, you know, is given to the rapist. What exactly goes into um, the psychosocial support that the, the, the victim needs? What goes into the psychosocial support that the family of the victim needs? What goes into the empowerment that the family of the victim needs? What goes into the, uh, the need for scholarships that the victims may need to keep them safe or to help them better reintegrate into society? Does the government have a defined um, budgetary allocation for supporting victims? If that doesn't exist, then um, it's still unfair to victims whatever has been put in place. The government needs to think about the survivors, the victims, so that, I mean, appropriate support given to victims will help victims to translate into survivors. Otherwise, we keep on re-victimizing victims. That's mm. the situation. Thank you very much, Dorothy and Jemena, speaking to us this morning. Thank you for having me.